This video is a really simple one. Let's compare Sword and Shield to Scarlet and Violet. There's a lot of commentary around the community that Scarlet and Violet just isn't doing it for people. And I think it's almost a bit of an unfair comment. And to drill home that point, I want to compare, of course, the first six Sword and Shield sets to the first six Scarlet and Violet sets. So I think we can pretty much compare, of course, the two base sets, Scarlet and Violet base, first Sword and Shield base, Cardian Fates, first Rebel Clash, probably something like Obsidian Flames versus Darkness Blaze, of course. 151 probably coincides with the release of something like Champion's Path from Sword and Shield, Paradox Rift versus Vivid Voltage, and then Paldean Fates versus Shiny Fates. Okay, the, <laughs> the argument will be pretty clear, and I think you get the, uh, the whole premise of the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and if you want to become a channel member, that would mean a lot. Supporting the channel and also, I suppose, the community that we're trying to grow uh, means a lot. If you become a member, you can shoot me an email asking for some personalised investment questions. Anyway, back to the video at hand. That whole notion about Scarlet and Violet maybe not receiving the love that it deserves, I think coincides with a lot of other factors, um, namely things like down downturns in the economy. Uh, hey, look, there's an all-new Pokemon series coming out. You know, that hype that we had throughout Sword and Shield era from stimulus, bonus, stimulus bonuses, COVID, people sitting at home, the whole Logan Paul, other influencers really pumping up the hobby. It seems like Sword and Shield maybe got a lot of love. And now that there's perhaps a slight downturn in the hobby, uh, Scarlet and Violet seems to be left without the love. So let's compare them though. But before we do so, what exactly makes a good Pokemon card set? And you could pretty much argue, surely it's demand. But... What does demand mean? What brings about the demand? Well, a few things, of course. It's got to be the chase cards. That's got to be one of the top ones. And that stems from a few more factors as well. What's the Pokemon as part of the chase card? What's the artwork like? What's the sentiment from the community and just the overall demand for that sort of card? And I don't think you can really put more on a set than, you know, just what is the sentiment from the community towards the set? And therefore, what are the top chase cards and artwork like? Like that sort of makes a set. That's what makes a set cool and valuable and people wanting to open it and rip it and sell it and buy it and everything else in between. Like that is surely the deciding factor, that demand from the community towards a set, which is based off the hits, the artwork, the Pokemon. So let's compare Scarlet and Violet Base versus Sword and Shield Base. Scarlet and Violet Base, of course, bought in the new Super Borders, and it also bought in, well, a heap of new rarities, which almost muddies the water a little bit, because we're not really comparing apples with apples. Sword and Shield, of course, had things like Rainbow Rares, which has now been deleted. Alternate Art, which has changed into Illustration Rares versus Special Illustration Rares. But keep in mind, the first six sets of Sword and Shield, until we got to Battle Soul, including the two holiday sets, Shining Fates and Champion pa Champion's Path, did not have alternate art Pokemon. So Scarlet and Violet base versus Sword and Shield base, what do we got? Sword and Shield base really has two hits, maybe three. It's got the Marnie, the, uh, the emo chick from Sword and Shield uh, waifu side of things. Uh, it's also got, of course, the Snorlax gold, uh, not gold, the Snorlax um, full art in a rainbow and the Snorlax full art non-rainbow. Other than that, like there's not a great deal of chase cards inside short Sword and Shield base. That Marnie, though, is really starting to tick up in price, and it holds a stronger price than anything in Scarlet and Violet base. But I think Scarlet and Violet base's artwork just hits a bit harder. That Miriam held a pretty strong price for a long period of time, and of course it's dropped down. The two legendaries, the Maridon and the Coridon, with their special illustration textured artworks are really cool. I think, which one's better? Surely the artwork inside Scarlet and Violet base is better than Sword and Shield base. The only other thing that you need to keep in mind, of course, which we're not really assessing through this, but it's the print runs, okay? And Sword and Shield base had a pretty big opening print run and then a very, very small reprint. Scarlet and Violet has a ma had a massive opening print run and then a really big reprint. So there's more supply of Scarlet and base, Violet base on the market than what there is Sword and Shield. And of course, Sword and Shield's now a four-year-old, four year old, four four plus year old set that's been on the market for a period of time. So if we talk about it, if we're going to score this in some sort of way, what's the better base set? Sword and Shield base or Scarlet and Violet base? For my money, when it comes down to the artwork, the only thing that's helping Sword and Shield base is its lower print run to Scarlet and Violet. When it comes down to the artwork, the texture, the new illustration rares, special illustration rares, it's got to go to Scarlet and Violet and base. Let's move on to the next one, right? Paldea Evolved versus Rebel Clash. 
This is the introduction of the new region. So you have the new Gen 8 versus Gen 9 starters inside the sets, okay, and their evolution line. We look at Rebel Clash, what have you got? Boss's Orders, that's pretty much the only card with any value compared to Paldea Evolve. Paldea Evolve still, in my opinion, is the nicest Scarlet and Violet set, other than 151, so nicest main Scarlet and Violet set so far, okay? That Tyranitar is cool. That Magikarp is amazing. We've got two Iono cards inside there as sort of waifu chase cards. Compared to Rebel Clash, I don't even think we can present an argument for Rebel Clash against Powder Evolved. Powder Evolved absolutely just blitzes it out of the water. So again, if we're scoring, it's got to be two to Scarlet and Violet and zero to Sword and Shield so far. Next set, Obsidian Flames versus Darkness Ablaze. Okay, very similar. We've got that whole Charizard vibe. They're both sets based off Charizard. Charizard's on the booster box artwork. It's on all the posters, the advertising for these sets. Obsidian Flames versus Darkness Ablaze. Now, Darkness Ablaze only really has one chase card other than a Rainbow Butterfree and a Rainbow Salamance and what? A Rainbow Scizor. There is not much to chase at all in Darkness Ablaze, just a regular VMAX Charizard. And it's eclipsed by the same artwork being on Champion's Path Charizard and Shining Fates Charizard in a full art shiny and, of course, the one from Champion's Path. So this Darkness Ablaze Charizard has just tanked in price. I think it's worth like $25 US versus, of course, the Obsidian Flames Charizard, which is a special illustration rare, okay? That main chase card hits harder. Also, okay, you've got a few other Charizards which are still worth a little bit of money in Obsidian Flames. I'm not saying Obsidian Flames is a stellar set because it's not. I think it's the weakest set from Scarlet and Violet so far. Just like Darkness Ablaze is the weakest set from Sword and Shield. But it's still a better set than Darkness Ablaze. The SIR Charizard beats the Charizard VMAX from Darkness Ablaze. You've also got some illustration rares in the lineup, of course, the Pidgey Trio through to Pidgeot. So it's just... A better set in my opinion it's not a great set or a good set even but it's a better set than darkness of blaze so there we go three zero scarlet and violet to sword and shield 151 versus champions path again is this even an argument it's like powder evolve versus rebel clash 151 bought so many people back into the hobby particularly people probably in their early to mid 30s like myself okay that grew up with that original 151 Pokemon. This isn't even an argument. Champion's Path has two stellar chase cards, which is the two Charizards, of course, but that's it. It doesn't have anything else. 151 has special illustration rares, illustration rares, like it's just the Alakazam, the Charizard lineup, that evolution line through Blastoise and Venusaur as well, where it's just like it's an literally an evolution of the characters as they uh, as they get bigger and, and bolder. Like 151, a Zapdos EX. It's a, not even a question. Four nil, Scarlet and Violet. Paradox Rift versus Vivid Voltage. I've got a little soft spot for Vivid Voltage in case uh, you didn't watch the last video, but I shouldn't because it's really a one-hit wonder, isn't it? It's really Rainbow Pikachu and nothing else. Versus Paradox Rift, which has... You know, Roaring Moon EX, Iron Valiant EX, it's bought in a new uh, game mode to the TCG, of course, in that ancient and future. Uh, it has heaps more depth of chase cards in illustration rares and special illustration rares, whereas it really feels like Vivid Voltage is a one-hit wonder with Gold Pikachu. So, again, I'm going to have to say it is 5-0, Scarlet and Violet versus Sword and Shield. The sixth example and this is the last one we'll go into i know there's another scarlet and violet set just out but i think it's a bit early it's only been out you know a couple of weeks so if we go powder and fates versus shining fates again is this a question shining fates is one hit wonder as well it's just that big shiny charizard the v max and what's the next most expensive card suicune or something just as a regular uh regular shiny versus powder and fates you know pikachu shiny of course the charizard sir the mew the gardevoir like Again, I don't think it's a question. Powder and Fates isn't as good as Hidden Fates, but that's not what we're comparing. It is a better set than Shining Fates by a long shot. So there we have it. The first six sets for Scarlet and Violet era versus Sword and Shield era is 6-0. And Sword and Shield era cops so much praise and so much love, whereas Scarlet and Violet seems to be left in the wayside a little bit. However, the big turning point Sword and Shield was really Battle Styles onwards, or maybe not Battle Styles onwards, but Chilling Rain onwards, which means, okay, Battle Styles versus the latest Scarlet and Violet set, we're up to set number seven, okay, including two holiday sets for each 
uh, each era so far. So what it happened, what happened in Sword and Shield was number eight, okay, from uh, number eight onwards was just banger after banger after banger. So I will say for Scarlet and Violet, although you're six nil at the moment, and even with the seventh set, if your eighth set isn't absolutely smashing out of the park, because that's what Sword and Shield did, and that's what people are going to remember Sword and Shield by is the eighth set onward, just chilling rain onwards, absolutely killing it. Okay, so. People keep saying we're going to need a good latter half for Scarlet and Violet. And you know what? I think we really do. It's been a great start. It has been. The artwork's phenomenal. Illustration rares are cool. Special illustration rares are cool. They're finally, I think, listening to the community and they're tearing the chase cards a little bit. <sighs> hyper rares, though, they're, oh, they're so hard to pull, but they're not. no one wants them. No one wants a hyper rare. No one wants a gold-looking dinosaur, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, Tell me your thoughts down below. Do you agree? Do you think the first six Scarlet and Violet sets are way better than the first Sword and si uh, six Sword and Shield sets? And do you agree that Scarlet and Violet really needs to go hard in the latter two thirds slash latter half to keep up with Sword and Shield? I'm Michael. This is Pokey Oz, and I'll catch everyone next time.